say some things about hope before I get into this answer. Okay, and just kind of a broad little hope talk. So I want you to think about what you and all of us were taught about hope growing up. I was taught to have absolute perpetual hope always in all things and that that was really the right way to be. Didn't matter the situation, you just always threw more hope, 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 hope at it. Okay. Another thing about our hopes, a lot of our hope from our childhood and a lot of our woundedness from our disappointment from the hopes that haven't come to fruition is that a lot of our childhood or inner child expectations and hopes are idealized because we are pure, we are innocent, we are precious. We don't know how the world works yet. And a lot of us as highly sensitive people carry an idealism now you've heard me talk a lot about the pendulum swinging back and forth. So if we hold an idealism and it doesn't happen and we hold a lot of hope, the pendulum is liable to swing in the other direction and we'll feel pessimistic, disappointment, even despair. Many of the questions today touch on grief without using that word. And in our grief, it's not necessarily a time to hold space for hope. Maybe we get some glimmers of hope throughout the grief process. So if you are grieving and if you are hurting, if you are in the angry stage of grief, me talking about hope might piss you off. And that's not bad. That's okay. I tend to think of hope and the grief process as pissing us off to help us move through our anger. So what's the difference between hope and expectation? Okay. The difference to me is that hope is just pure. Hope is, I hope. An expectation hinges our wellness, our okayness, on this thing that I'm hoping for happening. That's why expectations get sticky. Okay. So for this talk, I'm describing hope very separate from expectation. And this is what Stephanie's question is, question is about. So how do we keep this human process of hoping and hoping and hoping and getting a lot of our hopes dashed? How do we continue to hope? Should we continue to hope? In most of the things that I teach, that pendulum, that continuum, we're working towards getting to the center. Most of us as sensitives, if we've grown up in a dysfunctional family, we have hinged our expectations, hinged our wellness, our okayness on expecting others to show up in certain ways. And then when they didn't feeling forlorn, forsaken, lost, disappointed, with no guidance about what to do with our feelings. When those feelings can't flow through us and we learn how to finish with those feelings, they get stuck. And they are liable to block our healthy hope, like Stephanie's saying. Okay. So as we learn how to not have dysfunctional hope, which is hoping in things that I can't control, if I hope that my sisters and my mom wake up one day and come and apologize to me and want to work things out and are willing to get some therapy, if I hope in that, I also keep that connection open. At a point in my own recovery, I had to let go of that hope. That's what I decided, that I had hoped and hoped and hoped and hoped. And that it would not be good for me to endlessly give energy into that. Now, am I absolutely hopeless on the other side? No. There's a little part of me that holds a space for anything is possible. And I am open to a possibility. <laughs>